Now then, Charlie, we've got a lovely green whiskey on the table this time. Um, this is a independent bottling of 12-year-old Gervin, uh, bottled by the good people at Duncan Taylor. This is kind of like a single cask. It's one of, was it 400 and... 477 yeah, bottles. Um, so it's it's a limited edition, but but mm. but quite 477 bottles. Yeah, it's odd that it, it doesn't say single cast, so it may be a, it may be a couple of um, hogsheads. Yeah, put together. Kind of added together potentially. But um, grain whiskey, yeah. as as you well know, is produced in huge huge quantities it's by made, only eight distilleries. Yes, by only a handful. In and this one is from Garvin Distillery. Mm. Um, which is uncommon, actually. It's, uh, Gervin is owned by William Grants, mm. who, of course, own Glenfiddich, Balvenie, and um, what's the gin? Uh, Hendrix. Hendrix gin, yeah. which is also made on the Gervin site. Sure. And Ailes Bay Distillery as well, also on the Gervin site. It's a big site in sure. Ayr Ayrshire. And the, um, they built it there originally to, to, to allow for access of uh, maize from America. Okay. Um, it's, it's not far from, 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 not coast. far from, well, the, the, the port of Gervin. Sure. They may have used maize at one, at some stage, but they gen generally use wheat mm. like the other, other grain, yeah. grain distilleries. I think it is quite unusual to, maybe it's a sign of the times that grain whiskey is becoming more sought after, more accepted for it to be bottled just purely as, as a single grain. Yeah. Um, yeah. I yeah. imagine 99.9% .9 of grain whiskey that's produced will go into, into blends. blends to you know, provide that, that blank canvas for yeah. Johnny Walker, yeah. Valentine, Chivas, whatever it may be. Yeah, um, yeah, that's so. What see. So it's a lighter style of spirit. Mm. Um, 12 years old, this one, isn't it? Uh, 12, yeah, 12 years old, years it was old. distilled 2009, bottled in 2021, so. Um, so we're expecting a sort of a lighter style, sweet, mm. tends to be sweet, the, possibly sweeter than many, many malt whiskies. Mm. Um, and of course, it adds that balance to to, to a blended Absolutely. scotch. Yeah. yeah, but it is. It's, it's always interesting to taste. It. Absolutely, I must yeah. say my my expectations of this are probably quite quite low um, from the grain whiskies I've tried before. I often find they either need, you know, perhaps a really interesting cask influence or twenty five plus years in well, oak know, to give it a bit of a bit of character. But so you see, a youthful twelve year old. Quite a lot are, are bottled say. at advanced age, mm. and they tend to be dominated by flavors sure. coming from the wood, oaky yeah. or vanilla, coconut, these sort of yeah. things. Like the, uh, the not, not dissimilar to American whiskey as a matter of fact, mm. the yeah. bourbon. bourbon. Um, but anyway, nose it and see what you think. Mm. It's, it's mm. clean. Mm. Um, it's not overburdened with um, wood, wood scents. Although the base notes, if you like, I think are probably oaky. There is a little bit of, not as much alcoholic prickle as I thought. It is no. bottled at 53.8%, so it has got a... Oh, that, is that the bottling strength? It is, yes. Gosh. Yeah. Oh. But no, it smells very, you know, maybe mellow is a bit too much, but um, yeah, definitely not Beating. harsh and spiriting. Oh, I don't know what I'm getting here. The, um, there's something mm. like crepes. Okay. You know, so sort, of, sort of crepe, not crepe, crepes, not crepes zets, but the mm. uh, uh, crepes. Crepes is that, uh, that's with lemon and sugar, I think, and okay. crepe. And now I've said it, the, the, I'm, I'm imagining oh, what we're talking about recently, the, the, fant, fant, the fantasy, fantasy smells. Yeah, phantosmia. Fant, phantosmia, Fant phantosmia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, when you're basically influenced by somebody and you get, get things in your head. <laughs> you yeah, imagine yeah, things that aren't imagine, there. Imagine <laughs> some smells, yeah. Um, but no, there is a, a gentle sweetness, maybe a touch of, you know, you've said lemon juice or whatever. There's maybe a hint of citrusiness coming well, through, I'm, but it's I'm, very... I'm stick with that. I think yeah. it's, it's, it's rather attractive. It's, it's, um... Yeah, it's a good, good tasting. I'll, I'll seal that for, for another time. Mm -hmm. Predominantly sweet. Mm. Tiny bit of acidity. Size of the tongue, short finish. Just as you'd expect. I mean, it's a very simple, easy drink. Mm. Pleasant though, pleasant. I, yeah, I thought it would be simple and boring and, no. you know, one sip and it's all gone, but there is there is something there. Yeah. Do you find that, obviously, single grain whiskies like this, do the distilleries have any, you know, distinct characteristics? Do you think you'd be able to tell a, 
Port Dundas from a Cameron Bridge to a Girvan or is the product I would have, to be honest, yeah. Laurie, I would have great difficulty. Yep. But people who really know blenders mm. and so on, they, yep. they, they know that the um, they, they, they know the distinction features of each of these grain, mm. grain distilleries. And indeed, I've heard it said, you can't make a successful blended scotch mm. with only one one grain component. Okay. You, need, you need more than more than more than one. Okay. Do you, I don't know whether yeah. that's the case or but the uh, yeah. No, I've been it's been interesting looking at kind of the recipes of some blended whiskies and you'd assume that they would have like a set, you know, set list of, you know, we always use fifty percent Cameron Bridge or whatever. But yeah. for I think it was the compass box hedonism we tried yes, recently. That's right. Often they use, you know, predominantly Gervin, but then the next batch might be predominantly oh, really? Strathclyde yes, or right. predominantly something else. So yeah, yeah. I think obviously blenders know know what they're doing. Yeah. They start yeah. with the flavour they need to create and almost work work backwards. Yeah. So I imagine grain whiskies are flexible enough that you can influence them with cast type or ageing yeah. to yeah. Yeah. sort of mix yeah. and match yeah. if needs yeah. be. Um, but no, this is a, a very, very pleasant drop. Um, this one, as we say, is an independent bottling. Um, so the cask has been purchased by Duncan Taylor and bottled. Well, Duncan Taylor's been around for a long time. 1938, I think, the company mm. was founded. So they've got, or they certainly had, presumably they're renewing stocks all mm. the time, but they, yeah. had, they had a huge stock of, uh, of old whiskies, mm. and the, which they release from time to time. Sure. Yeah. And now I'm suddenly thinking of cappuccino coffee, for mm. some reason. Mm. Mm. You feel the future of grain whiskey is, is bright? Do you feel more and more people are appreciating, appreciating the differences and the subtleties in there, or has it still got a long way to go? I don't think that single grain will threaten single malt, mm. nor blended scotch. Okay. And the industry is quite concerned about blended scotch whiskey because the it's not getting, it's, it's considered wrongly, and you'll mm. agree, I'm sure, to be the poor relation of yeah. uh, single malt. I mean, it's, it's I mean, harder it's, to it's, make, it's, for it's, one thing, well, blended exactly. whiskey is very, very... And I mean, the answer is it's just different. But no, for the, for the single grain, I thought, as I say, my expectations were low. I thought it was going to be quite quite basic, but it's, it's pleasant. It's nice, a nice mm. summertime dram. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 summer. Yeah, yeah. gentle, sweet, <clears throat> yeah, great stuff. A nice, easy, nice introduction easy, easy to, to, to mm. grain whiskey, or indeed whiskey in general. Yeah, so. yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs>